Welcome everyone. Welcome to semifinal number two for Bush League. Season three. Season three. Today I am your host for the memes. My name is Sokin. And I will be guiding you through this through this feed fest of a of a game of a series. And uh today we are here to basically assess the power levels of both teams to see who is worthy of going on to face ITD in the finals. Today I don't have a, a co-caster with me. I was in a rush. I didn't even have time to plan much else today. <laughs> but um I don't need anyone. All right? I'm good by myself. Okay? All right, well, hey, it looks like we're already basically ready for the game. Uh, this is a first in Bush League history. We're actually ready on time today. So, um, oh, my God. <laughs> um, today, the teams, uh, we, we actually have a, a decent, I think both teams have basically have their, their top players for the most part and on these teams, so it'll be good back and forth action for you. I think we're just ready to get it started. I think we're just ready. First game. Towers of Doom. Towers of Doom. BDP on the left and on the right. Oh shit. Four Eight months. Equals 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 D tilde. <laughs> Eight equals equals equals. <laughs> Thanks, Grizzly. Appreciate it, dude. I chose the perfect announcer for for the you know subs and stuff. So like she cracks me up every single time. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the four months, Grizz. Appreciate it, dude. I would have uh, I would have asked you to cast today, but I was just in such a rush. I was uh, play basically playing Heroes of the Storm from um, I want to say eight thirty in the morning up until about five thirty in the afternoon. I played a good 15 games of HOTS today. So, I'm already in the HOTS mode, baby. I'm already in the HOTS mode. Alright. BDP. Banning out Thrall. They're, they're, they're targeting Goon. 100% that's a Goon ban. And now this is... Let's see. Who's going to be the tank, I guess, in this case? Probably either Hash or Blasta. Okay, banning out the Gaz, so the mana part, they don't want to deal with the Gazlo. Oh, also forgot to mention, uh, thank you, Fringe. Really appreciate the 1,500 bits. Thank you so much, man. I I, I am really thankful for uh, every time I cast, you're just here, the 1,500 every time. All right, Old Backpack on the Diablo. I got, you know, funny thing. I saw Old Backpack when I first started. I saw him on, uh, on the Blizz launcher. Queuing for quick match, right when I started playing quick match this morning, and I was like, "Hey, bro, bro, get in here, let's feed." And we fed for a good three solid hours from about eight thirty to about I think it was eleven thirty ish, something like that, maybe maybe twelve thirty. So he was up. The whole point of this was that so he could get sleep and he would like you know wake up in the morning at a decent time. But he was playing with me until like <laughs> he was playing with me until like what like probably two three a.m. a.m. or something midnight something like that at his time. But he should be uh, nice and warm. He played a lot of Garage games, a lot of Diablo games. 
All right, we got uh, hash browns on the tank, uh, goon on the Hanzo, Mephisto, uh, Gizmometer on Mephisto, Tower Baron on Anna. Hmm, very interesting. Hmm, I'm kind of, I'm a little sad. I'm not gonna lie that Tower Baron is on Anna. I kind of, you know, I wanted to see the Tychus. I wanted to see the Zeratul. These are things we talk about all the time, but you know, now that I'm kind of expecting it. It's just like a letdown when it doesn't happen. Alright, what kind of support do we want to pick up here? Fringe is probably going to pick up Regar, Stukov, something like that. I would imagine Blasted at this point is going to go uh, Rainer. His solid, tri uh, tr uh, tried and true Rainer. Oh! Above all. I hate that skin so much, dude. I don't know. I really hate that skin. That and that Anduin skin is just terrible. I'm sorry. But anyway. Alright, looks like Shin is really enjoying Anduin, so uh he's picking up Anduin for his team. Fringe on Dahaka, very interesting. But he he has, you know, a, that offline experience in the past. Um the nano boost. Mephisto ult is something. Oh man, Nano Boost Zeratul also um, could be really popular here. Nano Boost, uh, Nano Boost, <laughs> Nano Boost. Oh man, the Nano Boost. The Nano Boosted Zeratul, the Q build, is actually fucking nuts. And the question, I, I mean, I think you know Scott is more of like a meta player than than uh, Tower Baron, so I feel like that is a po a, tr a real possibility here. You could also go. Nano Consume Souls, Nano Endurance of Hate, um, even Nano Lightning Breath, all very, very good. The Blasted Jaina, okay, I've seen that before, very good. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Looking at both of these teams, I mean, honestly, both drafts very good for this map. I, I'm, I love Leoric, I actually think Leoric is really underrated in general. Uh, really underrated in general and so because of that I kind of feel like on towers once you hit that level four you get the Neil peasants you can you can match whatever you know top laner there is but the problem here is something we need to note right <clears throat> Dahaka can make this fight a 5v4 at any time anytime he wants he can they could be going you know fight they could be four of them at the camp on the bottom lane Leoric's top, all of a sudden, Dahaka Burrow's bottom, uh, either invading or defending the invade, right? Either way. So Leo has to be very careful, has to understand when he, when that's a possibility, when he needs to be there, um, as well as when he can double soak and, and, and then as well when you show up to the shrine. I'm very interested to see how Fringe and, uh, and a man apart kind of play their roles and see, I mean, for sure, Goon is going to call out. He's going to be like, you know, for sure calling out these teams. <laughs> He's for sure going to be calling, uh, calling out these teams, uh, or telling, making these calls, I should say. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. It's already begun. All right. Game number one, Towers of Doom. On the left, we have Big Dick Plays, Old Backpack on Diablo, Scott on Zeratul. <laughs> so, uh, Tower Baron on Anna, Gizmometer on Mephisto, and a Mana Part on Leo. Five, four, I can't pause it, Rip. Um, <clears throat> Goon on the right side, we have Alpha Male Protocol Amp. With Goon on Hanzo, Fringe Average on Dahaka, Shin on Anduin, Blasta on Jaina, and Hash Browns on Garrosh. Um, now. <laughs> Fringe getting his first, uh, the first wave, and then get a head top. Very nice. A man apart already headed top. I mean, they know he's there. He just showed in the wave, but that's cool. Oh man, Scott is already actually in huge. Oh, whoa! Scott forgot that it's uh, level seven. Level seven is when it that you know that whole drinking thing comes online. That's fine. I make the, I didn't, I made that mistake this morning, honestly. I was feeding pretty hard on Zeratul. Um, 
All right, the standard lanes coming out here. This is exactly what we thought we would see. Scott going mid lane after that feed. And just picking up this soak. Not missing a single mini. Very nice. All right, this is the situation I'm talking about here. Blasta, Shin, and Hash Browns all on this camp. Now they know, and they're going to walk forward. Are they going to try and invade? If they try to invade, the Dahaka Burrow can come in. And Fringe was ready for that. You could see him stop at the top wave on the map, getting ready to burrow. Now, old backpack, he doesn't have a charge. Okay, he doesn't have a charge, but he doesn't end up dying. Now, something to note about the Garrosh Diablo matchup is that it's actually a battle of wills. A lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people don't know that because the, they don't play the matchup very well. They don't know the tank players that are very good at being tanks. And this is kind of how it works. If your Garrosh throws your Diablo, Diablo can just charge right back. He'll be fine. If Diablo charges Garrosh, Garrosh can throw Diablo and there's nothing he can do. And that's exactly what you just saw. You just saw Old Backpack go, oh shit, that was a bad idea. Because Hash Browns punish him for it. So it's kind of a battle of wills. It's like, we're both going to hold on to our CC unless we can use it on someone else. Now, you ideally, obviously, want to use that on a squishy or something along those lines. Um, so that's kind of like the goal. But see this? See this right here? Now, technically, he could throw him and be in trouble. But the DPS here focusing, uh, focusing Scott. Scott's doing a great job of distracting. Old backpack has easily died there. Oh my gosh. Goon diving Scott, getting the kill. Goon is just picking on Scott right now. He's watching him. He knows, he's like, I know where you're coming from. You try, you overextend even a little bit. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to jump over that wall. I'm going to chase you. You can't escape me. Now... This is not exactly what's supposed to be happening here. Uh, Fringe burrowed way early to the bottom lane. This is not really how it's supposed to work. Now it's kind of an even playing field here. Hanzo and Leo both racing down to the bottom lane. They're zoning pretty damn well though for Shin, and Shin's gonna end up getting the bottom tower. Now that's okay. That's perfectly fine. This is just level uh, level five. This is the this is the very first uh, objective pull. Oh, very nice by Shin. Very nice pull back by Shin. Hash Browns was in a little bit of trouble there. Ended up saving his life. Very, very nice. That's the plays that Anduin can make. Goon in a little bit of trouble here, but not too worried, knowing that his team is very close nearby. Now, that's an 80-second cooldown. Anduin's trait, 80 seconds. Oh, man. Hash Browns is a little out of place here. He should have actually used his Unstoppable. Um, that's what I would have done, because it's a little bit scary. Oh man. A man apart is just going to E out. He really has nothing to worry about. Oh man. Scott is starting to do a lot of damage. And once he gets that level 7, that's a huge power spike. Goon is a little out of place. And Old Backpack almost punishes him for it. The Haka is top right now. Getting the soak. And gets them to level 7 just barely ahead. Scott scouting what's going on here. They're looking to maybe pick on some rotations here. But nothing is nothing is particularly happening right now. They decide, okay, nothing there's no rotations right now. Let's just get our camp. And that's the right call. They actually this should have been started as well. Um, especially since you have a Jaina, there's no reason that you shouldn't have just rotated around here at, at this point. So Goon's starting that, knowing that his team is a little behind, and now they're making the invade. This is the time that Fringe should be burrowing in right now. Here he comes. Goon called it. Fringe is here, but Shin is already basically dead. Goon is looking to do some damage, but he is really low, and now that Shin is dead, he can't do anything to save him. What a disaster. Blast is really low, too. Old backpack in the back line. Fringe being chased away. Hash rounds is just feeling useless right now, not being able to do anything. And BDP coming back, getting two of these ulters, now coming ahead by four points on the course. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. True Mr. Fu, thank you so much for the two months. Welcome back to the dojo. Goon here, just clearing the waves, looking for level 10. His team is slightly behind. Fringe needs to also be doing 
making sure that he gets some extra time there. Oh man, Goon, very close to being killed. If, if Scott was there, that, that could have easily been a death. Scott is very, very aggressive here. I like it a lot. I love I love aggressive Zero Tool plays when you can make Zero Tool look good, and you have a team in a coordinated environment that can play around Zero Tool. You can do so much damage. And um, I think Amp is calling that this area is dangerous. Oh, excuse me, my nose is a little runny. 3v3 in this bottom lane. Goon is mid lane, but he does know that Zero Tool is bottom, so he's not really too worried. Um, not too really worried about it right now. Old Backpack finishing up the Souls. I like this build, actually, from him. Um, the level 1 Soul Shield, level 2 Souls. Mount Malevolence is definitely the pick at level 7 if you want to do some deeps as Diablo. That's definitely the pick. And he went APOC. He's feeling comfortable with the APOC. They're looking for a VP. Okay, they got the Durance. VP, APOC, Durance, Entomb, Eye of Horus... Wombo combo. Oh man, Blasted just getting just getting destroyed by that Cubo. These teams are Amp is clumping way too much. Clumping way too much for this. Oh man, Hash Brown's getting thrown in. We're getting entombed in. The Anna. Oh my. Oh my. The Shin. The Shin Power Word. Whatever the fuck that is. The Holy Word. Whatever. Salvation. That was an insane play. And they're gonna get a kill on Scott. They barely get the kill. What's next? French chasing down Tower Baron, brother on brother. Oh my god, it's a bloodbath. Amp coming through, just destroying. A great engage by Anna, or by uh, Amanda Parna, I meant to say. Um, actually worked out really well, but everything after that, they just destroyed them. They didn't get quite get the combo off. I feel like the, the VP just wasn't what they wanted. Now, something to just realize here is that even with everything that's happened this game, no matter how you think this game is going, it's tied up right now. This is Towers of Doom. Any team can come back at any given moment of this game. That's how this this map, this map is the most balanced map in the freaking game, and actually maintains the same XP structure as before the XP changes this last year. So even, even more so now than ever, it is the most balanced map. Fringe going and getting this juicy top wave. Very nice by him. It's still anyone's game, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the Ring of Frost, I'm not so sure I agree with. They got, he's got to make sure he hits that. But it's going to be a little hard when you're potentially in a VP to hit that. I I just hope that BDP can pull off a sick combo. I want to see at least one sick combo uh, this game. If they're going to do something like that, it's always nice to see it, uh, see it work out at least once. Fringe doing a great job double soaking. But he needs to be careful. He's actually gonna, they're actually gonna rotate, and he has to be yelling. Goon has to be yelling at him right now. Get the fuck back. Oh, old backpack decide. Oh, he doesn't get the combo, but Anna's keeping Diablo alive for so fucking long. Fringe coming in to double, just to just to double ensure. Oh my God, Goon barely misses the arrow. They get the confirmed kill on Diablo. I think that's all they really wanted. They want his souls down. The souls are weren't were, were already kind of down, I guess. 23. They weren't finished, so. But it's good to confirm that Diablo kill. He won't will not be here for this next tribute. Scott is getting bodied. They didn't even need the ring. He was dead before the ring even came out. Amp starting to really amp it up. <laughs> Amp really starting to amp it up right now. Pulling off two back-to-back -back shrines. Two objectives back-to-back. -back. Very nice. Uh, Dehaka does not have a burrow for at least in the middle here. They need, be, they need to be very careful. But they do have this 13 to... Okay, well, it was 13 to 12. Now it's 13 to 13. Old Backpack coming in. Shin uh, rooting Old Backpack on his way in. And not allowing Old Backpack to get any value. Hash Browns. Getting saved by Shin in peril from the the Entomb. But that's only a 50 second cooldown on Entomb. That's a worth trade for an 80 second trade. Very nice by everyone. Oh, the Durance of Hate! Shin almost getting caught. Goon in trouble. The Holy Word is insane! They needed to just stay in that. 
Oh man, the VP. Oh no, the APOC VP did not work as they wanted. Old backpack is one HP. Scott's gonna try and carry, but he just can't do enough damage right now. And that is a worthwhile trade for BDP. Shin actually making the fucking insane play there. Very nice by Shin. Good job, Shin. Unfortunately, Goon was, was kind of separated because he was maybe worried more about the VP, so he's a little separated. And so it's kind of like this... It's kind of like this, you know, ch this game of chicken. It's like, who's going to throw down what first, right? You got the VPs, you got the Holy Words, but you also can be interrupted. You don't... It, it's this th fine line that you have to play because it, if you stay too clumped, you're going to get VP'd or you're going to get apoc or you're going to get Duranced. But you need to stay close enough just in case those plays come out. Okay, they're stalling the bottom lane. Dahaka's looking to potentially burrow here. Goon is mid, coming down. Both teams capping their own. And they're ready to feed. Old Backpack is going in, but he doesn't have an ult right now. Neither does... VP is also not up. Hash Brown is getting destroyed by Anna. And Goon just gets annihilated. The Durance comes out. And Amp is in huge trouble right now. Old Backpack is just using the Entomb to his advantage. Oh no, Shin. Oh, Shin is also in trouble. Can they get the kill on Shin? I think so. Yep. And that's all she wrote. Very back and forth game here, ladies and gentlemen. We are now tied again. 20 to 20. Again, anyone's game here. We basically just got to the halfway mark of this game. We basically just got to the halfway mark. Now, I would, I would have to say, at level 16, this is when you start to see teams take bigger advantages when they get, you know, these kind of kills. As of, Up until right now, it hasn't really been that big of a deal. Feed a little bit, maybe you get a slightly better trade, and, and maybe you can do something like take their camp, at most. But later, you know, as you can see here, these walls getting worn down. Well, slightly worn down, I guess. I mean... Well, I mean, on both sides, the, the bottom and mid towers are a little worn down, and because of that, what that means is that it's a lot easier for the bombers to get in there and do some damage. It's a lot easier to take a tower now. So you can expect that an advantage can be made into a way bigger advantage than it has previously in this game. Both teams have their ults up. Both teams' ults are up right now. God, oh my god, Scott looking for fridge average, but the insane tongue and the follow-up causing Scott to get deleted from this fucking game. That's where you just you just want to all F4 the fucking game after those kind of plays. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. You get that small advantage, and all of a sudden you're on the boss. This is exactly what I'm look I'm talking about. The APOC is here. He's gonna have to APOC it himself, though. He doesn't have a VP to rely on. Fringe silencing Diablo so he cannot APOC on the point. Oh my god, the Durance and the APOC follow-up is absolutely disgusting. I'm actually nauseous right now. I'm fucking nauseous at that combo. Holy shit. Amp looking to have the advantage. And then getting anally taken advantage of. Bend over, boys. Bend over. Oh no, the feeds are the feeds are chaining. Oh, okay, never mind. That's whew, that was almost a fringe feed right there. Fringe actually been doing a really good job lately in his games. Even even if people are calling it, his mechanics are actually still still there, considering he doesn't play the game very much. <clears throat> wow, and just wow, ladies and gentlemen. Very very good. Alright, Amp is back. They're looking to make a little play here. They can maybe get a kill on Diablo. He's all by himself. There's three top. There's nothing much else to do. But Scott... Ha oh, no. But Scott has his Q build up and running. Level 16. And Goon is dead before Shin can really do anything. The Durance of Hate! Getting caught in the Durance of Hate again! And Goon fervently pinging Shin. Shin saving Hash Browns. But now Fringe is by himself. Scott is after Blaster. There's not much Blaster can do. I'm afraid he's going to get picked off. But actually, Scott gets wrecked as well. No, Blaster followed. <laughs> what a feed fest. 
What a feed fest! Oh my god. <laughs> Insane game so far. I like the call. I like the, all these calls so far. But Amp has not been able to... What is this? What is... What is this? Anyway. Oh, they're gonna get dove here. But I think Chin is gonna be able to save him. I think it's not that big of a deal. Hashtag should be okay here. He did get dove already. The Entomb is here. They're looking to destroy Hash, and apparently it's gonna work. I really didn't think that was gonna happen. I wonder if this is Hash's only tank. I feel like... I don't know. I don't remember what tanks he plays. I don't know. BDP is, is just actually destroying. Is Diablo just OP? Is... Scott making the plays is Anna OP. I don't fucking know anymore. It, to me, the Durances have just been the play. The Amp does not know how to react to the Durances here. And they just got five. Oh my god. Shin is just way out of fucking position. and gets destroyed. A man apart looking for the follow-up, but he does not have Entomb ready. If he had Entomb, that could be an insane play right there. BDP has level 20, and they have been fighting... And Fringe came in out of nowhere. I have no idea what's going on, but he's definitely dead. He's trying to buy space, I think, for Blasta and Goon to, to get this back, but they're not going to be able to get it back in time. Oh, no. I think they're both dead. Oh, wow. Oh, my. The amount of damage is just insane, dude. The amount of damage and a blow-up that this team has. They're playing it so fucking well. Like, props to BDP right now. Maybe it's because maybe it's because Tower's not feed Tower Baron's not feeding. Maybe it's because he's on Anna. Is that the reason? I'm genuinely trying to figure it out. I feel like his momometer doesn't play this well normally. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to flame. I'm just saying he's making plays right now, and I love it. And this is a step up from what I've seen, so keep going, man. That's great. Scott looking for the rotations here, possibly anyone being out of position. <laughs> <laughs> Schizo, get my popcorn. <laughs> Fringe coming in with the flank here, but oh man, he misses his isolation. I'm not quite sure what what's there left to do. Oh man, Scott is just destroying these people with his Q build. There's nothing they can do. Fringe is dead. Hash is dead. Shin is dead. The VP is out. It doesn't even matter what happens anymore. That is game. That is GG. They're going to feed one last time. Oh my god, he got the nether key proc. Jesus Christ. Disgusting. Disgusting. BDP, I'm disgusted. At how amazing that this game was. Actually disgusted. Oh. Oh my. These are your stats for this game. <clears throat> This is why a lot of Masters players, they, lo they like to ban out Zeratul in the first ban. That's why Zeratul is typically banned in Masters games. Even though Scott fe fed seven times before level 16. Okay, hold on one second here. Um, even though he fed seven times, it doesn't, it didn't matter. The rest of the team was playing very, very straight up doing their job. Jesus Christ. Those Durants of Hates got insane value, insane value, like actually insane. Now I don't know. I never, I don't know if I saw a lightning reaction play, but it didn't matter. It honestly didn't matter. Great game by BDP. Absolutely. Like one of the best games they've played this season by far. Um, give me one second here while I get some, uh, info from them on what they want to play. Tower. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Let me set up this game real quick. I hope you guys enjoyed that game. That was, that was insane.
Wow, very, very good game by BDP. What did you guys think about that game? Tell me in chat. Be on the left. Swap. Swap. Uh, all right. All right. Amp deaths were in numerical order. Oh, I didn't notice. Shit. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was actually an insanely rough game for Hanzo uh, on for Goon on Hanzo. That facing a Zeratul is almost never really that fun in general, but having to uh, okay, and then uh, but yeah, like just there's so many things. There's so many things to think about. You can't clump for the Durance. You can't clump for the the Leo and Tomb. You can't clump for all this different stuff. Eventually, you maybe get mind gamed a little bit into um, into actually still clumping or thinking, "Oh, we're fine now," and we're not. And the thing is, you still can't clump. You can never really clump because the Q Zero tool always, almost always has his Q up. Almost always, if he's doing it right, it's actually very, very hard to play against. So I don't really blame anyone here for for having a, hard, a difficult game. Maybe we'll see uh, a ban here on Zero tool. About to get the next game started. We are going to. We are going to Infernal Shrines. Oh, whoops. Oops. My bad. Oh, man, it is hard. It is hard to both admin and uh, <laughs> or set up the games and cast at the same time. Oh, I thought I made him captain already. God damn it. All right. I think we're ready. I'm doing it. I'm starting it. I don't give a shit. Infernal Shrines. BDP on the left, AMP on the right. I'm wondering now, and and again, another good zero tool map. I mean, really, any any map is a good zero tool map. I would say two lane maps, maybe not as much, but these three lane maps where you can you can stall the roams, you can um, or you can stall the rotations. I mean, and you can roam as zero tool. All you know, objective based ones where you have to get together on a point. You know, as five, it makes it a lot easier for Q build zero tool to. Makes it a lot easier to pull off. Hey, Cat Peach, nice to see ya. Hope your Saturday is going well. What's up, Key? What's up, Robin of Loxley? What's up, Bacon? I didn't say get to say hi to you guys. I, I saw you guys chatting. I didn't get to say hi. What's up, everyone? Bacon actually at work right now. All right, the KT band. Oh man, that's like a that's like a gold band right there. It's like a plaque. Gold plat ban, the KT ban. I wonder if Hash is going to change it up this game. They didn't ban the Zeratul. Now, something to note is that they can take the Zeratul. Is one of them going to take the Zeratul? In the past, a long, long time ago, when Goon and I used to play on a team together, he played the Zeratul, but he hasn't played in a long time. Okay, they're looking for that Diablo aggressive tank pick. Maybe he's not as good on Garrosh. Uh, and he's he's feeling more of the Diablo pick. Okay, that's that's good. I like that. Oh man. Old backpack of Nubarak. I haven't really seen this one yet. Very interested in it. Oh man, the thrall. They're really looking to pick on that Diablo. Now, are they gonna take the Li Ming here to counter the Anubarak cocoon? Or, or even the Tracer, honestly. I played Tracer earlier today. Destroyed on Tracer. Holy shit. And uh, Tracer is still really good. I don't know who would play it, but Tracer is still very, very good. Okay. Fringe on the Dahaka. Still very good on this map as well. Now, I'm, I am slightly now worried for, for Amp. 
you know, unless they've been, I, I feel like they need to ban that Zeratul right now. Get rid of that Zeratul. You can, you cannot heal through that as a Regar, and you also don't want to have to keep up on the with the VPs and the ancestrals through all that chaos. Um, now Blasta can possibly Li Ming, but they're they're banning out they're banning out Blasta, they're banning out Blasta, knowing that Blasta is is a uh, is a Jaina player, and they don't want the the shrine clear. Very very nice. Loxley calling the Scott Zuljin right now. Over under on whiffed bro charges. <laughs> I wonder what the Vegas odds would be for that. Zeratul ban. That's exactly what I thought. I, I'm honestly surprised they didn't choose it yet. I would have first picked that. That was almost that was almost the sole reason why they won that game. Almost. Now I still expect Now Gizmometer chose Thrall, but they kill, still could switch off. I, I could we could still see a Mephisto here. Mephisto is still very, very good. The Durns could be insane here. I still feel like it's a very good pick. For the alliance of oh my. Okay, the aggressive Rainer and the and the Tower Baron Anduin. The Tower Baron support god today. Gonna make some plays. Gonna let old backpack dive in. CC get a kill and pull him away. Yes, this is a best of five matchup today. Uh, so far we are one game BDP to zero amp. All right, Rainer. So they need another range. They could go another offlaner here and have a thrall in the four man, whether that's an echo of elements, whether that's a crash lightning. Exactly what I was talking about, ladies and gentlemen. The Arthas offlane with the Scott ace in the hole, level one on Rainer. You get the Gizmometer in the four man. I think that's this is a great pickup, and and Amp is doing the exact same thing. Imperious. Oh man, Goon is on Imperius. Blast on Li Ming. I like that a lot. They should have chosen that. I feel like they should have chosen that Li Ming a little sooner, but maybe... I don't know. These these bands sometimes don't make fucking sense to me. I don't get it. But it's all just personal preference because re in reality, none of this matters too much in this in the in the grand scheme of things for Bush League. When real you know, relatively speaking, when we're talking about Bush League, it's really just a matter of how you play. Alright? How much how much Familiarity, familiarity do you have on your hero? Can you blow people up? We just saw Scott absolutely fucking wreck people, bend them over against their will. And we could we could easily see that again. I mean, Scott is a very good auto attack uh, hero player. He's very very good. Um, he is a master level player for sure. So he can he can wreak some havoc and. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they. We'll see what they end up doing in this game. Both teams heavy front line. I'm so excited to see see what happens. Let's get into this game. Game number two on the right side. Amp with Goon Hots. Well, Goon on Imperius Blast on Li Ming. Hash Browns on Diablo. Fringe Average on Dahaka. Shin on Regar. On the left side we have Big Dick Plays. Tower Baron on Anduin. Gizmometer on Thrall. Old Backpack on. What is his name? I'm Anubrak. <laughs> Scott on Rainer and a mana part on Arthas. He looks so different when I was like looking at him. I was just like, what the fuck is he? <laughs> what, like, what hero is he? <laughs> Forgot for a second. Though. Now, something to note, and I think someone just did this. Okay, yeah, he did. Okay, anyway, we got a fight here in the mid lane. Oh man, Fringe almost gets the tongue, but Arthas with the huge flank. Hash Browns would be a really great heal, but Goon is in a little bit of trouble. He needs to be he needs to be very careful this early game. Later on is when Goon powers up. Um, is when Goon powers up on Imperius. I like that he's in four man. I like it a lot. I feel like Imperius, the follow up you can get on a Diablo is just absolutely nuts. And if the if the Lee Ming if Blast is watching, that's a free kill. I mean honestly, like like Anduin is okay at saving people, but so, you know if he's not ready, they're just dead. Or if he's on, or if it's on CD, it doesn't really matter. You need to be careful. Oh, old backpack just checking around. Where is everyone? Do you need to get his rotation a little bit? Oh my! Right after he came up out of that, 
right after he came up out of that. Is he going to die here? Good is very low. He needs to be careful. Oh, man. Thrall almost... Oh! Blasta doing insane... Making the insane plays on to old backpack. Very nice. Very fucking nice. Good job. Now, Fringe has the huge advantage on wave clear against an Arthas. So he decided he wanted to go mid to get some, get some, uh, get some essence here. Okay, this is, this is fine. Arthas is going to rotate out. They need to be careful mid here if they're going to go mid, but they're not. They're not. And oh man, oh very nice by Fringe. All right, we got more, more action here in the mid. Goon is a little bit low on mana. Imperius very mana intensive. Very very mana intensive. Now, because they have two solo laners, oh man, his mother are a little bit in trouble, but now nah, he's fine. Now, because they have two solo laners, what they can end up doing is basically have a solo laner across from the map from each other. So, you know, Thrall's on the bottom, Arthas on the top. They're still basically solo laning, and then the rest of the team can rotate. So you got a three-man rotation if you really wanted to. And I find that that actually works out really well, because then, <clears throat> then you still get to play the solo laner like a solo laner. Uh, but you get the added advantage of in team fights later on. You have that heavy front line. What's up, Yelly? Nice to see you, man. Hanging out with us today. Oh my god, a man apart. Absolutely caught out. He's in the bottom lane for some reason. I don't know fucking... I don't know why, but he survives. I'm very, very surprised he survived that, but... Okay. I feel like that should have been a kill. Alright, Goon picking up his camp. Very, very aggressive play. BDP doesn't quite know what to do right now. BDP is a little, uh, a little, you know, confused as to what's going on. Oh my gosh, I think this is the easiest tongue of his life, but he doesn't end up going for it. They're just focusing on the shrine. They're already halfway done. Okay, now, once it hits 30th, it's basically over unless you get a kill. Oh man, because Mamba is trying to flank, but Fringe very good at uh, at catching him out, making sure he doesn't get a good flank. A man apart coming in, but they're already at 35 skulls. They have to be calling for it to just to just get the rest of the souls at this point. The skulls. Goon goes down, but they ended up getting the rest. Fringe, is he gonna die too? The essence is popped. The Punisher is there. Are they gonna get any kind of kills? Anything off of this? No. But it's a oh! Ash Brown's looking for him! Oh, the leap of faith by Tower Baron. Let's go. Very nice by both teams. However, BDP went in a little too late there, and it really didn't ha really didn't stand a chance. Um, at the end of the day, sure you got a kill, but it's not really worth it. You could, you know, Dehaka could just go back top. Uh, and look at him now; he's they're double soaking out of their minds. Um, level seven picked up by Ampere. Very very nice play. Um, by both teams. However, you know, BDP just slightly late there. And, I, and I'm a little worried for Amp later on in this series because, honestly, the way it looked that fight, I, I was a little... I was a little monka s. That was, that was a little scary, man. I feel like Amp is just not able to team fight very well. I don't know if it's just their team synergy or, you know, what's going on with that. Also, this is something we kind of foresaw, you know, would happen um, anyway, which is Li Ming can't, really can't fight on the Shrine. And, and really what they should have done is just probably backed off. Rune Cap. We have a Rune Cap Arthas without the attack speed. Feels bad, man. Very nice by friends with the double soaking. Very good on his part. He has the tongue at level 7, so he now has infinite tongues. Oh man, the follow-up. Oh, Scott getting saved. But he's still- he went back in! He went back in! And this is the problem with Anduin that everyone in Storm League is running- is- is- is having. This is the problem everyone is having. Which is, you can save anyone you want. But if they just run back in and die, it doesn't fucking matter. It really doesn't matter. You can save anyone out of any situation, but if they're just Durka Durka and they walk back in, that's it. It's over. You still lose. And you have an 80 second cooldown. Very nice by Ampa enforcing that. And unfortunately, Scott kind of cost him that a little bit. 
They're picking up their left camp while Amp is picking up his bottom camp. Hold backpack, checking out the rotation. Very good, very good. Very nice. Goon looking for something, but he didn't get there quite in time. Could have maybe jumped on the point if he was there like slightly earlier. Fringe average still double soaking here. Very nice. Just pushing this bottom lane. Nothing too much else happening on the map right now. He's playing a game of just playing a game of footsie before level 10. I mean realistically, oh you know, BDP should have actually forced a fight way sooner than level 10. Now they're gonna go up to this level 10, uh, with with this level 10 advantage, they're gonna start the shrine again. They're gonna get an advantage. Oh, they're they're actually just looking for this right here. And Fringe is gonna look to burrow in if he has to. Oh man, Gizmometer taking the oh man, everyone taking the safe route. Everyone taking the safe rotation. Beautiful by BDP. Seen that coming a million trillion miles away. Beautiful. I love that. Whoever called that, great job. It's not often you see a Bush League team do that. Usually one person goes in there and feeds. Very nice. <laughs> Actually thinking Pog Champ. I agree. Po thinking is Pog Champ. Alright. Hash Browns. Not really initiating, but kind of initiating. Apoc going off. Doesn't get a single stun, I guess, on Thrall. He goes down. The Sindragosa comes out. Scott is in a lot of trouble right now, but he is peppering away at Goon. Goon gets the Ancestral. Goes in on Scott. Blast is having a hard time right now getting any damage through the shrine. But they get the Scott kill finally. Goon with the insane two man stun. No one can follow up. Team Amp is very healthy right now. Ready to keep pushing the shrine advantage. And there goes French. He's just off back to the double soaking. Realizing he doesn't need to be there. I don't think he used his burrow. If I I don't I didn't see a burrow and I he didn't burrow bottom, so. So this is uh Definitely an advantage they can he can keep and keep go going back to double soak is very very good right now. Um, it looks like he's too scared to leave though. He's too scared to leave his team, and they got the they got the Punisher. There's no if ands or buts about it. There's nothing that an that BDP can do right now. They need to they need to play smart right now. This is very scary. His monitor can take. Oh no, that you hate to see that. Now something to keep in mind. The last patch rebalanced how the Punishers work, and so therefore, we actually are seeing now that the Mortar Punisher does a lot of damage. Look at how much damage the old backpack just took. Actually insane. Oh my god, they're diving in! They're diving in onto BDP, but the Earthquake keeps them alive! Shin is getting destroyed! Oh my god, Hash Browns with the insane stun! But they can't do anything else here. They, the sustain on the side of BDP is keeping them so alive. Old Backpack still going back in. They're looking for Hash Brown Souls. They want his souls. Can they get it? Oh, they he dodged the root. Goon, oh, Goon kind of going back in. He's going to feed. He's going to feed. Now that's two feeds. That's two feeds. Instead of one feeds, that's, that's a two for one special. The buffet is open, ladies and gentlemen. Goon. He felt guilty. He felt guilty. It's it's the survivor guilt. You know what I mean? We often have that in our games. And we feel the need to go feed. Uh, uh, yes. Dia if Diablo didn't die, that would have been nutty. Honestly, I feel like it is actually possible he could have... He could have lived. I, I do feel like it was possible. Um... Anyway, both teams feeding out of their goddamn minds. Love it. But Amp does have the advantage right now. Oh my gosh, Frenzy is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Amp coming down to kind of make sure that nothing goes wrong. They're on the point. Hash Browns jumps on the point. Blast it gets the, the, the explosion onto Gizmometer. Oh my god, oh back back almost going down. But the shield, the, the shield saving his life. Blast a follow up too good. Very nice by Blasta. And honestly, Amp should should be looking for these kind of fights outside of the shrine. Because of what we talked about earlier, they don't have the best shrine fight. So you you know, picking up these fights outside of the shrine 
is just what they need. Maybe they can pick up another one right before the next shrine and get an advantage there too. Or, you know, on the flip side, BDP can stall that out and force a shrine fight. I feel like so far this game, all I've seen is really is really um BDP coming a little too late to the shrine. And I feel like if they all just fought on the shrine, BDP really could take it, but Oh my gosh, Amp is just up so far in XP. This map is, this map can be so snowballing in that sense, especially when you have a global. It's kind of kind of insane, actually, if you think about it. I wonder what the level 16 talents are going to be. I'm very interested to see that. Now, of course, at level 10, I never really got a chance to discuss this, but at level 10, we do see some ults here. We see the Syndragosa. We see the Light Bomb. I haven't, we haven't really seen much use of the Light Bomb, light bomb yet. There's nothing to really interrupt, so you're not going to see some crazy interruptions, but you are going to see some potentially play plays being made depending on how it goes. Oh man, look at this! There's now they're watching the safe rotation. They learned from the previous time. They're like, oh, they're going to go. Oh, they they had to have seen that, right? No. Oh my God, it's happening. Go fringe, go! He's bearing. Scott just getting. Oh my God, they didn't get anything with that. Amp is going to die here. No, they had to blow someone up. And this is exactly what I was fucking talking about. This is exactly what I was talking about. Get to the shrine on time and you are probably going to destroy. But you can't come in last minute like that. They had to focus one person. They had to focus one person. To be clear, Scott was that person. He was at 10%. But um, they were not able to pick it up. I would have to go back and look at that replay to kind of see... To kind of see how it goes. Um, but it just looked like, oh, we ripped, you know, we kind of got the Scott, uh, but kind of got interrupted by the light bomb. Oh no, Scott's kind of walking away from us. And, oh shit, we're fucked. That's kind of that's kind of like how I see that, you know, the, the sequence of events there. Okay, they're going to get this wall open very fast. No matter what happens now, I think this fort is gone, to be completely honest. The Sindragosa, but... Uh, I feel like that was a little early for the Syndra. Not really necessary, but they're diving in. Old Backpack has the Light Bomb, gets a stone on two people, then the follow-up stone onto Imperius. Hash Browns is... Oh my god, Hash Browns is being targeted, but he gets the Ancestral Healing. Wee Ming is going to come out. Is she going to be okay? Yes, she is. Diamond Skin, by the way, lol. And... Things march on. I, I Honestly, look at this. Look at how healthy this Punisher is. They would have had that fort no matter what. They didn't need to do that. They could have easily just pushed up to the keep and then done that. And then use the Sidiosa. But it's okay. Oh, they're pushing. They still have the Hyperion. Scott is going ape shit. Just auto attacking, pressing A out of his mind. Alright, can they get anything else? Old backpack going in. Apoc is down. Goon is Goon is in the middle of everything. Oh my god. Hash Browns is just getting fucked. Absolutely fucked, and Goon can't do anything to save his team. Get, get, Goon can't do anything. He can't save his own life. He can't kill anyone. He can't peel. He just, he's kind of sitting there, and his team can't do anything. They can end this game, but are they going to? The light bomb goes off and stuns Fringe Average to death. Dear God, this is brutal. Oh my God. <laughs> He diamond skins forward and gets cocooned right away. Oh wow, very nice by BDP. They're going in on Shin, but it's already over. It's already over. That's all she wrote. Wow. Wow, man. That ended so quickly. Amp had the early game advantage. Look at this. These five kills. These were basically from the early game. This was from the very first parts of the game where Amp was able to get the picks before the Shrine. They went into the Shrine. They made BDP late. BDP or BDP was late in the first place. And then they were able to take the Shrine and kind of go from there. And that's exactly kind of what I was saying. Once BDP starts getting the just the straight on fights, they can win very easily is how I felt based on how the fights had been going to that point. <laughs> Um, I get why Blasta took it. 
I get why Blasta took it. Um, I get why Blasta took Li Ming. It makes sense. But it was never really kind of... The, the engages never really went down like that. I mean... He went in, he kind of just went in with light bomb, got like a four, you know, three, four, five man stun and kind of just, that's all he really needed. Like he didn't need to make it a five v four, you know? All right. Well, Sky of Foundry is the next map. Now, I played a little bit on Volskaya today, uh, quite a bit actually. I think I played like maybe four games on Volskaya. It feels a lot different now. It feels a lot different. Um, you can't do the same things you used to be able to do. And, I, and honestly, I'm not a big fan. I have to be, be completely honest. I'm not the biggest fan of what they've done. And I didn't, I didn't feel like it was necessary. I felt like the map was actually decently balanced. Um, in that, you know, the, if you're going to have a two man objective, if you're going to have a two man objective, you need to make it powerful. All right. You can't just be pussyfooting around. Um, oh, God damn it. I got to swap all these fucking people. Russian and team two as far as pick. All right. <laughs> um what was they what was they saying? I don't even know. Uh yeah, oh yeah. So if you have a two man objective, you can't be pussyfooting around like that. You have to make sure that if you get that objective that it does a, a good amount of damage. And I feel like the new the new um you know, the new robot, this is exactly what I predicted and this is exactly what I've been seeing in my games. The robot puts your team at a significant disadvantage because what you have to do is you have to get the robot and then you go and push, right? That's the ideal scenario. They're like, oh, oh, well, okay, we're going to give the robot, let him push. And then you just kind of kill the robot. And you could even dive past the robot, to be completely honest with you. You can dive past that fucking robot and it doesn't do jack shit. They, they nerfed the way, the amount of damage that that robot does in, in fighting. So there's no reason why you should be scared of it anymore. Like, it, it makes no sense what their changes were. Because at the end of the day, now you have this shitty objective. It doesn't fucking matter what the, what, who gets the objective. Maybe they get a fort. Maybe they get a keep. But they can't end the game. And even if they do try to push in, you could dive past. You know, like, it's just, I'm not a big fan. I, I played it a lot today and I'm... It just comes down to killing your opponent. It really, now they've just made all the map that, that all this map is, is just who can kill who first. I mean, realistically, you know, who can keep the snowball going? Um, I did not feel like it was fully like that before, although it does have snowball elements. I will not say that it was completely like that uh, before. All right. Map number three right now, Alpha Mill Protocol on the right, down two games to BDP, 0-2. Let's see if, if uh, Amp can do anything to come back from this. I, uh, I already know Goon is fucking tilted right now. Goon is absolutely fucking tilted right now. So <laughs> we'll see, how, we'll see uh, what they can do about that. Uh, Goon is fucking mad. So one more game from BDP and they will be the ones that advance to the finals versus N2D. I think, uh... <laughs> I think, uh... In, its, in the current form... Okay, now it's kind of hard to tell who the fuck's going to show up to, to each week, right? I have no idea. Sometimes teams play with subs and all this shit. It's like, it's like I have no clue as a cat as the caster for Bush League. I have no fucking clue who's going to show up, how they're going to play, what roles they're going to play anymore. I really have no, no idea. So it's hard to say, like, 
oh, if blank meets blank in the finals, you know, who's going to do better, right? I don't know. But I'm guessing ITD has been very consistent throughout the season. Most of the time they have similar players playing. And they all know kind of their roles and what they need to do. Um, unfortunately, that is not the same for all the teams. You know? The crusade calls. Wow. Okay. We got a Johanna. We got a Gazlo. <laughs> How do I know Goon is mad? Um. <laughs> I just know Goon. I just know Goon, and the rage, the inner rage, is uh is strong. The inner rage is strong on it with the, with that one. Goon trying out of his mind to carry his team. I know that. Um, I'm I'm a little like I'm wondering where you at, hero? Where you at, hero physio? Hmm hmm. Oh no, you said you're out of town. That's what it was. You're out of town this weekend, I think. You went on that road trip or or whatever. But um. All right, we got hash browns on Muradin. Shin is on Lily. I am a little worried for the fringe thrall. Not gonna lie. But you know, pressing the R button, pressing earthquake is a lot easier than it is to hit an isolation or to hit a tongue. I will say that. <laughs> uh, um, I, I'm very interested now, you know, a man apart is, is a Gazla main. Very interested to see how he plays. He's been playing pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. I think he's used to people banning out the Gazla at this point. He's, he has his backup heroes. One of which I think is a false ad, one of which is definitely a Leoric. And last game, I think he was on Thrall, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, is that Gizmo? That was Gizmometer. Um, he was on. What was that? Uh, the other offlaner. My ear fucking hurts. This thing is not comfortable. Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> this is actually hilarious. This is definitely a game where Amp can win. Like, if they don't let. This, if they don't let BDP scale right now, if they don't let them scale and they just dominate all the objectives, this is easily an amp game. Easily. I'd love the false stat pickup by Goon. Very, very nice. To counter the Gazlo, you want to make sure he doesn't get any free push. All right. What support are they going to pick up here? They got the wave clear. With the cool man. Oh man, the Anduin. The Anduin last pick. Very nice. I think that's that's a pretty good pick up here. <clears throat> let the let the the Scott trade. Let the Gizmometer trade. Get some get some you know scaling going, and then if you have to, save them. Pull them back. You know what I mean? I will say like a good like the good Anduin plays are so goddamn frustrating. So damn frustrating. All right. Game number three. Can Amp step it up? They need to step it up right now. They need to power up. Ah! Okay? And power the fuck up. So can G1 gods in chat. Well, I want five games. I want five damn games. I don't want to sit here for just 20 more minutes. And just snooze fest. Oh, I guess BDP wins. It's like, oh, no, come on, let's let's keep it going. Let's, let's, you know, let's make it interesting here. All right, BDP has kind of been dominating this this match. I mean, let's be completely honest here. Amp has had its moments, but BDP has been just stomping them in the late game. They walk forward, and they dominate, and that that's what we've been seeing. Can Amp stop that this game? Let's find out. Going into game number three. Amp on the right side. Goon Hots on Falstad. Fringe Average on Thrall. Blasta on Gul'dan. Hash Browns on Muradin. Shin on Lili. I love it against the, the Zul'jin, by the way. Tower Baron on Anduin. Gizmometer on Kel'Thuzad. Scott on Zul'jin. Old Backpack on Johanna. And a man apart on his Gazlo. I'm definitely getting a winner's interview, by the way, no matter what. So stick around after this series. If this is the last game, it is, it is what it is. I'll bring on... Um, so who 
should I bring on? I don't know. Maybe I'll bring on Kyle Turner. Anyway. Old Backpack getting a, an insane condemn. Fringe average almost dying. His team would have been fucking... Yoon would have been yelling at him so fucking hard if he died. Oh, man. All right. Good stacks by Gizmometer. Gizmo, Gizmometer has been... Has he just been, like, playing the cheese fucking heroes? Like, the Mephisto... Keltazad just cheesing his way to fucking wins? Is that what's happening? Oh my, that was very close. Damn, fatal. Oh, that was a little laggy. Sorry about that. The support camp just spawned. Goon needs to, uh, to scale. Goon needs to hit that level 7. When you get that... Uh, French almost dying, but it wasn't to a Mercam. <laughs> Very well said, Cappy. There's still time. There's still time for that. Don't worry. Look, he's going right now. He could die here. By himself. Alright. Luckily, he has Goon to help him out, by the way. Alright. Very good. Let's, let's, see what, let's see what stacks he's at. He's at 8 stacks already at the, at the 1 minute 45 second mark. That's actually really good for a Kel'Thuzad. He's a mage main. Okay, that makes sense. I was going to say, like, he's kind of, like, playing the cheesy heroes. I don't want to say cheese, but you know what I'm saying. Like, the Mephisto Durance. No, I'm not saying those aren't plays, but to me, you know, they could feel cheese sometimes getting, getting that against you. Okay, my kill is going to happen here. Unfortunately, the one downside I see about the comp on Alpha Male Protocol is... Um, <clears throat> they have no kill pressure right now, really. Now, Goon, what he can do is he can really watch for those fly opportunities. Maybe the bottom lane, maybe Gazlo extends a little far. I feel like that is an option. Like, he should not be top lane. He should be yelling at his team to go top lane and clear that for him. Because, like, a man apart... Oh, man, Scott is way out of position. What the hell was that? He just wanted those stacks, I guess. He's already five stacks. Nine stacks. Five stacks. Very good. Very good on it. Um, well, we haven't really heard from anyone this season, so I don't know who you're really referring to. I just talked to uh, Hero. It was Hero and Fringe last time. So if Alpha Male Protocol wins, I'll interview uh, Goon this time, and we'll get like, maybe Blast in there or something. And if... Uh, BDP wins, I'll get you Tower Baron and maybe Old Backpack. Okay. Alright. Hash Brown's just getting kind of destroyed. Oh my god, the damage is fucking insane on him right now. He needs to back off for a second and heal up. Alpha Mill Protocol took a lot of points on that, though. They're up to 50. Very, very nice. Blast is kind of in this weird area. It's a little scary, honestly. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. I see the exam. Alright, Hash Brown's kind of getting just, just chunked here. Oh, man. Old Backpack is just getting some insane condemns. And now, oh my god, they're paying the price. Fringe is very close to be, to dying again. And so is Goon, so is Hash Brown, so is Shin. Everyone is very, very low. They just threw down the turret, but it's not doing anything. Fringe is about to die. Fringe is about to die. Now, this is the problem. When you let a Gazlo through here, this is the exact problem that you're gonna have. First of all, hired goons. Fucking nuts, alright? On this map, with a turret camp, on the point, that is gonna be super hard to play into. You have to make sure, as amp, amp that you get to the objective as soon as possible. All right, you can't let them set up at all, at all. All right, and the thing is, they have the poke. They have the poke that they need. They have the goon, uh, the goon Falstad. They have the Blasta, um, Gul'dan. I feel like it's definitely possible for them to poke them out and just kind of like sit back. I think at level ten, it's going to be a little bit easier, but at the same time, at ten, BDP is also going to have an answer to that with their ults and whatnot. So. Kind of a hard game for them, I think. Amp, maybe Amp got out drafted here again. 
They did get the well top. That's not good for them. They're all going mid middle. Picking up this soap. Gizmometer just absolutely stacking out of his damn mind. He already has this glacial spike. Amp has to be very careful with that glacial spike. Now they have another uh, tool. Oh no, he should not have gone that way. Go to the right, Goon. Go to the right. Is he going to get out? He does. Alright. No deaths, but very close. Very close. Oh no, Ash. Oh! Man. I actually don't even... I just don't know what to say. It's a feed fest. Like, you can't be getting caught by that. You know? You have to know... If you got chained and you don't have a level 10 avatar, or you know anyone else, right? Get the fuck out. Get out of there. You're not gonna survive that. But you don't have a level 10 Lili, you don't have someone that can actually save you right now. And um Yeah, there's cleanse, but is it down? Because I didn't see it. Um It should have definitely gone out if it was up, and it did not. So that's just my feeling on the whole thing is that it wasn't up. It had to have been up. That's just, I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he already used it. Uh, okay. Yuen has a turret here. Very nice. Uh, old backpack has a support camp. And... Oh, they, they took... Oh, he probably bribed that. Very nice. So do they have two turrets? Uh, I can't see on that. Anyway, I don't know. I think they have two, but... Maybe not. Maybe they just took the other camp. Okay. If they get... They're not going to get an old backpack kill here, but if they did, that would be a really insane pickup for them. Nothing really happening right now. Now, they know that there's two top. They know there's two top right now. They could jump in on here. Goon is going in with the insane... Oh, my God. No. No. He needed that gust like a second earlier. A second earlier, and I think that's a kill on Scott. Oh man, Ugh, the Anduin plays this series are actually insane. Like those are the things. If you can do that as Anduin, you are, you are doing a great job. So now Goon doesn't have a fly. He can't really, you know, do his little his, his little spiel. He can't do his global spiel. But he's gonna go anyway. He's gonna go down to this bot lane. He's gonna grab the soak. Okay. Um, Amp is, you know, Amp is kind of waiting it out right now. This is what I'm talking about. They can, they can just poke it, poke him out here. Poke him out. Just psh, psh, pepper him. Pretend you're Jimmy. Pretend you're Jimmy. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant by, by that. And Goon is even close. Goon is even close, by the way. Now, guess Mometer is close to dying, but Anduin gives him the heal. The Earthquake is still there. Goon is coming in on the side with the Gust. The support camp is down, but it's not enough. Kel'Thuzad gets destroyed, and so does Tower Baron. Oh, no. They left the support camp there. Oh, my God. Gizmometer almost destroyed, but the old goon needs to be very careful. Goon, oh, my gosh. This is a very delicate situation right now. Very nice play. Very nice play by Goon. Oh, my God. Scott is insane, dude. Well, he's gonna, he's gonna die! Goodbye. Farewell. He, uh, he's super tilted right now at that, I'm sure. But that's his own fault. Alright, he's going in on Scout. Hashbrown's going in on Scott. Are they going to make sh make him pop his Taz? Not really. He still has Taz. Now, I'm, I'm actually not... I don't think they're going to be able to keep this point now. The good news is that they're way ahead on... Everything else, oh, very nice cleanse, but oh my gosh, the, the shield comes in, the blessed shield comes in, Shin is forced to pop his ult, they gotta wait for Falstad to come back, Falstad is on his way, but now the ult is already popped, what else are they gonna do? BDP by and large has most of their ults, they're gonna have to make a Gust Horrified play here, okay, they, they, they push him back, Goon was afraid that they're gonna do something like that. Get a combo off, get some autos in, and it would have been all she wrote. That would have been probably game, honestly. The snowball that you could create. 
Oh man, Scott is getting dove on, but oh my gosh, hash brown misses. The Taz doesn't need to go out, the fear is out. Goon goes down! Goon gets wrecked by, by Gizmometer. They could kill BDP, the old backpack here. He doesn't get saved in time. The leap of faith is down. Gizmometer doesn't have anything. Gazel also doesn't have anything, but they need to be careful. They need to just get on point and kind of just take some of this. But at the same time, they're so low. They need to wait five seconds. Five seconds, Lily would have had her ult. Oh no, dude. Five more seconds, Lily could have saved every single one of them. This is this is the time where you need someone to you need your support. I don't know what the, the comms are like, alright? All I know is that typically if I'm in, in comms with Kuhn, which doesn't happen much anymore, but if I am, he's yelling at me, I don't have clans, I don't have this. It's uh, it's almost Shin's responsibility to be yelling this at his team, because without cleanse, without ult, these are things that are playmaking abilities, just like Anduin's trait, right? You have to make sure your team is aware of, of what can happen with uh without your abilities. All right, the Gazlo disabling uh building is shit. I don't know what this is. I don't know which one it is, but anyway, uh, nothing happens here. In the mid lane, nothing really is, is too concerning here. Honestly, I would love to see them kind of just dive. Dive this back. Fuck this tur Fuck this thing. It doesn't do anything. Fucking dive it. But Goon is trying to get level 16. They're just going to give the fort. Honestly, it's fine. It's not the big biggest deal. Oh my god, that W is so dumb. I'm sorry. And he gets pushed away only to get pulled back again. Unfortunate. The fringe beams are the fringe beams just continue to give. They're paying dividends. Alright, Goon is uh Goon is, Goon is pushing this top lane. He's also giving some value, but he might actually lose a keep now. There are only five seconds left on this trigger lob, so last thing needs to be careful. Oh man, the big combo! Oh Gizmometer making the fucking plays! Holy shit! Goon now has to come back. He can't even split push anymore because his team is too busy dying. I think that's GG. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't. I'm not one to call GG, but I just have to be honest, man. His, his monitor is just. His fat fucking giganto dick is, is out. It's out and it's roaring mad fucking. Oh, okay, I realize I said that he fucking beats. Alright, well, it's just a moderate, the average dick, I guess. Alright, well, now we kind of reset, I guess. I don't know. BD, uh, BDP got a keep out of that, so that's really useful. Scott is kind of fucking them up with his, uh, his W build here now. Look at that, he doesn't even have to auto attack. He, he's like, oh, you got the lead lead? No worries. I'm just going to Arcanite Axe, Lacerate, wrong place. You're all going to be slowed, and there's nothing to do about it. Um, of course, they've been done with their their uh, <clears throat> their traits for a while now. Very nice. <laughs> um, let me check real quick here. How many stacks he's at? Forty-five percent extra damage on his W. That's a lot of damage. He, so, Goon is actually also scaling really hard right now. Now, if they can make this game last... If they can make this game last, then... Okay, uh, I just want to make sure I can pause. Um, if they can make this game last, then... Uh, you know, it is possible to scale the hell out of this game. But honestly, the damage on the side of... Amp just doesn't look to be working together as much as BDP just is. Oh, Gizmometer's coming in. You need to dismount him. Very nice by Goon. You cannot let that guy just walk up to you like that. Oh, no. You cannot let Gizmometer walk up to you like that. He's going to auto-attack you with a chilled touch. And he's going he's gonna to fucking kill you. And so far, Amp has not had an answer to that. Hopefully, they start dismounting him as he's doing that stuff. Now, I want to see them get to the fucking objective early. 
I want to see them not letting BDP set up. Now, the biggest problem here, two turrets on the side of BDP. And Blasta, oh my god, the cleanse was fucking nuts. Very nice. Shin with the awesome save here. Goon. Oh no. I kind of would have liked to see a fly gust, to be, to be honest. But a gust should say backwards. Oh my god. The fucking combos from Gizmometer. L look at that. He's untouched. This man is fucking insane. I guess that's it. Now, Johanna does go down. Scott is still alive. Shin barely alive. I think that's it, though, ladies and gentlemen. I think they, you know, they can honestly just push here. Taz Dingo is down. All these ults are down. It's up to Blaster and Shin to carry this right now. Can they carry this? That's... I guess that's it. They just kind of gave up. Not much they can do, though, with this Mercenary Lord turret. G. G. Big Dick Plays takes the series 3-0 to zero against Alpha Male Protocol. I'll be honest. I did not expect this series to go this way. I did not. When, even when I saw this lineup, even when I looked at this lineup today and I, and I saw... BDP with his lineup, and I saw Amp with his lineup. I was like, you know, not bad. You know, both of these, both of these teams seem decently matched. Unfortunately, the drafting maybe wasn't the most solid. Um, people were able to get their comfort heroes: Keltazad, Gazlo, Scott did whatever the fuck he wanted every single game and got away with it. It's just kind of going. You're going back to that the season one that I remember, the season one of Scott just walking forward at everyone. Here are your stats for the game. Actually, in terms of deaths, very close. Uh, Fringe up there with the four deaths. Johanna taking most of the damage, but the team was able to clean up, so it didn't really matter. Gazlo just set up on the point, did his thing. Very nice. Very nice from uh, Big Dick Plays today. Here are your talents, in case you guys were curious. Now, I'm going to get... Hold on, give me one second here. Um, let me get someone in this, in this for you. Hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> okay. We had Tower Baron and we also had Old Bat. Let me get Old Bat back in here. I hope you guys enjoyed those games. Wow, what a what a steamroll! Yes, <laughs> guys, if you're watching, get into fucking Discord. Jesus Christ, yes, get in here. The people want to hear your sexy voices. Hey, uh, what's up, Soken? Hey, Tower Baron, what's up, man? Um, not much. I pretty happy with the result of the last match so is uh is old back gonna come in here oh no he pieced out he's he's working on it he has to do some some weird vpn thing to get into his discord okay all right all right i want to start with uh well first of all congratulations congrats on your thank on you three zero win over alpha male protocol showing that, was that you're totally the unexpected. true alpha males of today uh yeah i was uh, honestly expecting Three masters on their team, um, with uh, Goon, Blasta, and retired Hero, but mm -hmm. didn't work out that way. Yeah, Hero, I think is out of town today. I think he was in chat for a little bit, but he, I'm pretty sure he's not available today. With that said, um, you were on support today. Yeah, the did... Wyatt then just cut out of cut out of like all of the hot stuff, so we didn't know where he was. So I had to take up support. I'm, 
Okay. I mean, you played you played support really well today. You made a lot of saves on Scott because Scott's so aggressive. Um, yep. Is that why you picked the Anduin most of those games so that you could uh, save him in, in case of emergency? Yeah, I kind of knew that their plan was to just catch Scott when he's extending. I mean, everyone kind of knows that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I just figured the best person for that is Anduin. And very, I think I still nice. stand by my statements. I think he's overtuning his healing. You think he's overtuned? Yep. So you think he's the win rate? So you think he's overtuned in his healing specifically, or or like everything else is just kind of broken about him? I just think he has just so many ways to heal. He has nonstop healing, pretty much, with the auto attacks. So, the first game I went, I mean, the second game I went with the auto attack, and to win. And the second game was more of the W. Hey, what's up, Gang for Squad? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. I. I... I can see that. So you, you've kind of been, have you been practicing a lot of support? Is that what you've been doing preparing for today? Um, actually, no. I've been trying to climb out of silver in Hero League. Or I guess Storm League. Yeah. So I've been playing a lot of trying to carry heroes, ranged assassins. But I tried out Air, uh, Anduin for a while and I liked his play still. I knew kind of what AMP would try to do. Kind of cut out, get Scott ganked out. Damn. I mean... You may be silver, but I mean your your strategy is definitely diamond master level for sure. Because if you if that's really what your plan was, it was a genius plan, and it worked out really really well. I mean, well, you, you guys, know I have I have the support of my team, especially Gizmo, old backpack, and I'm in a part. They both played above and beyond their rules. Scott, everyone knows that you know he plays very well. That first game is zero tools, kind of kind of eh. But uh <laughs> <laughs> Dude he had but seven then, deaths, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 fine, but um I, know, I think MP had us the first half of both games one and two, but there was a little inability to close those first two games. Exactly. Uh that's that's exactly what I commented on in the cast. Um it seemed like once you guys kind of figured out, hey, we can kind of just team fight them and win. You just walked forward and did your thing and came out on top. I mean, that last game was a perfect example. It's like no one could stop Gizmometer from doing his combo, and no one could get out of his combo. Like it was just, it would just seem unstoppable at times, you know. Um, yeah, Gizmometer is kind of the secret weapon of BDP. He's kind of a player that's never really played the other season, so not a lot of people had a lot of scouts on him. So he was a, we were able to pick a lot of his comfort heroes without anyone really knowing. I mean, I I know I personally have played with Gizmometer a lot um, in the past a, a while ago, and bro, he was feeding like a motherfucker when I played with him. <laughs> he was feeding his ass <laughs> off, but and and so I was just like, okay, whatever. I mean, this is just kind of like you know, people you know, wind timers, right? It's just kind of like a thing, but. Um, he's showing, he's showing that, you know, on his comfort heroes, he's actually very, very good. Um, also a man apart coming through today with, uh, a lot of the offlane heroes. I, it was Leo, then he got, and he got Gazlo, and then I forget what the other one was. Do you remember? He had Arthas. Arthas. Game two. Arthas, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, overall, man, I mean, the team just, just seemed to play so well together. I, you know, what's funny. I don't know if you heard, do you hear the beginning of the cast or no? I didn't. I have it on mute, but I have. Uh, I am watching the cast, but oh, okay. I'll watch it after this. So I, I was talking um, at the beginning of the cast because I was actually playing with uh, old backpack today. Earlier. Yeah. Um. I was. I played with him. So I. I've been playing hots. I went to a LAN party earlier today with some of my friends, and I set up my computer and I went on. We were playing some games, some quick match. You know, I have like we played like fifteen games a quick match, and um. I noticed old backpacks on. I'm like, oh, okay. And I, I just invited him to the party. We just started feeding, quick match feeding, playing. You know, he was playing tanks and stuff. And I was like, yeah. and it got to like, you know, 1230. And I was like, dude, you have a, you have a game at like, in like six hours. Yeah. <laughs> he like went to sleep, woke up again just to play. <laughs> yeah. He's actually put in a lot of time. He messaged us, I think on Thursday that we were like team practice on Friday, which we normally do. 8, 9 p.m. Pacific. And then after we finished that session around 11 o'clock midnight, he says, see you guys at 8 a.m. Like, I'm going to be on 8 a.m. the next morning. So he uh, put in a lot a lot of work for this 
this matchup. We honestly thought it was going to go possibly to five games, but we were just kind of lucked out that I think they didn't close games one and two, especially game one. I think game one, they had the best chance of winning. Game two, I think that draft was really wonky going to Li Ming as the range DPS. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Triple front line. I didn't really see how that was going to work out. Um, Yeah. It was the, I definitely agree. The towers game, I felt like had the most potential, the the best start, you know, really great start to the game. Scott feeding really, really hard, giving him, I guess, false hope. (laughs) <laughs> and then later on, the Anna plays, the Leo plays, everything was just on point. Um, yeah. Now, you know, great run by you guys today, but, you know, now we have to talk about next weekend is the finals. You will be facing um, in too deep in a best of seven series. Do you guys have enough material? Do you guys have enough strategy? Do you guys have enough enough cojones to go through a best of seven with the with the tried and true team in too deep, the team they're the team to beat. Do you feel like you can take them on in this best of seven, like you know, pretty well, or do you think this is something you're going to struggle with and and have to really push yourselves for? First of all, this is very strange. I'm used to being the interviewer. Now I'm the interviewee. It's very awkward. But... Deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> Tower drama I do, bearing. I do, I do think we have a good shot against them, even though we haven't really gone on top of any of our games against into deep but big big plays is the reincarnation of gat j so we got j 2.0 we're gonna just gonna be the underdogs and pull out the win oh okay so. i mean you know i feel like grizzly pulls that out a lot he's the one saying uh gaddy and the jets um no, this, this is got j 2.0 this was probably their second name that i <laughs> thought of like right after big dick plays we're really got j 2.0 one up on the, ah. the Gat J team, because our MMR difference is even larger than it was against <laughs> Best Coast Night is Owls against Gat J. So it's okay. going to be even, uh, even a bigger swing in terms of the outcome. Damn. Okay. Uh, so you think you think you're going to destroy them then? I'm not going to say that. I think if you look at the past games, that we haven't really had, I'd say, any chance of winning any of the games. So it's going to be very hard to at least get that first upper hand. I think the key to their, to beating them is focusing out Bacon. Bacon is the best player in the league, let's be honest. So we have to kind of focus him out and reduce his impact of the game. Um, do you feel like you have, I don't have to say, you don't have to say what they are, right? But I don't, I don't want you to give away any, anything or, you know, whatever. But do you, you know, there's, there's, there's some strategies that Into Deep has played throughout the season that are very obvious and no one has really had a solution for them. Do you feel like you have the solution for those those uh, standard kind of comps that they've been playing? You mean the double support? Well, I mean, you know, that's one of them. So the Ariel is the Ariel double supports, and then there's also the, uh, you know, like the the dive heavy Maev plays and all. You know, do you feel like you have it have the ability to kind of to kind of deal with that because. So far, everyone just kind of they've they've maybe had a you know, good early game for with it, and then later on just get, end up getting destroyed. Like, do you feel like you have the 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 um, flexibility in your roster for getting the heroes to counter that? I think we do. We have some evidence of in too deep losing some of their matches, so that's going to be the job on me to look at back on those games and see how they lost, and sort of see what type of strategies worked in those games that they didn't win. So I think it's definitely possible. No team in Bush League is undefeated. Like can is is invincible. I mean, so I mean both. I'm not gonna give out any strategy. No team but. is undefeated. No team is invincible. You are correct. Every every game is winnable. I, I'm glad you have that mindset. It's very very necessary in in a competitive you know environment to always you know always be giving it your best. Never give up. Um, very very good. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Completely agree. Is there anything else you want to say before we uh, we call it? I was you know I was hoping to talk to old backpack, but it looks like he's just in chat. I'm not sure where he is in. in oh, Discord. what the hell, old backpack? He was a big part of us winning those games, and he's want to come on say his piece. Get in here, man. Where are you at? Get in Discord. It's in the Discord channel, Pastor's Discord channel. Just get just join a channel. I, I'll pull you in here. 
Yep. Um, it says it's locked. No, wow. I know it's it's locked because only admins or whatever can get in, but it's only for casters. But um, there we go. Oh, okay. I guess he's in anyway. Okay. Old backpack, can no, you hear me? Admin. I hear you fine. What's up, dude? Congratulations. Hey. Good to be here. Five hours of sleep, 3-0. What do you want? <laughs> Back to sleep, baby. Champion sleep. Yep, damn <laughs> right. Well, not really. I can't sleep. <laughs> Two, so, uh, wait, made two hikes from this. Oh, okay, okay. You, dude, you you have been grinding, dude. You you and I, we put in a good, I want to say a solid um, four hours actually today of just quick match. I'm right. <laughs> Necessary. Like, I don't play enough. Very nice, man. No, don't. Are you going to keep this uh, this practice up going into the, the finals with uh, In Too Deep? Oh, yeah? Of course. Like, actually, Scott said that his uh, his classes have ended. So he's able to actually play during the week now. Hey, you so know, hopefully, I'll see him on. Let's not to give that info. It's all right. Hey, Stall, we practicing more. Like he won't feed a seven um uh, seven death zero tool. It'll be a five death zero tool. I mean, you know, saying that people are able to practice more, I feel like that's not really giving anything away. That's that's just good. Um, yeah. But it, don't say, you know, don't feel pressured to say anything. Um, so I already asked. Well, there will be a Chen coming soon. Oh snap! <laughs> 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 the meme Chen. The meme. Uh, meme I, I think I know what yeah, it's gonna be. Barrel right? Chen. Wait, how do you beat Butcher? Chen. <laughs> the the question is, can we get a Chen that doesn't feed? That's really yeah. what, what we need to see. No, he is your drunken uncle. He just feeds. That's what he does. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I just, first of all, I want to give you props, man. Like, today, even though we were all feeding and stuff, like, you uh, you have the heads of plays. You, you listen to, you know, calls, even if they're bad calls, like on our part, you know, earlier today, we were just fucking go fight, you know, all that stuff, yeah. uh, still came yeah. with us, fed with us. I mean, that's, that's all you can really ask, dude. And, um, uh, just good, good stuff overall, dude. Oh, good play. Um, let's see, do I have any specific questions? I guess, are there any special, um, you know, going, are, are, do you guys plan on maintaining the same rules going forward? I guess, since, uh, Leviathan is kind of pieced out. Uh, we're working on that because as you've seen, Tower Baron has played every role in uh in Hots in our in our leads. We may switch him around. Mm, okay. I but mean, damn, a, he carried on still. support today. I know he carried on on support on Anduin, right? Yeah. 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 So we might we may keep him there. We may switch him over to offlane. We may put him on um uh on one of his favorite range DPSs. Mm. But I think Korean we'll Zerno will maybe coming out. And we'll we'll Green's never exactly. we'll never know until it happens because um that's that's up to you guys that's you guys got a week to plan all this out um as for you old backpack do you have any any special heroes that you plan on bringing out you don't have to say which ones but do you do you have any specials uh old backpack well specials you do know out? you do know I play all tanks and Cassia all and tanks and Cassia never played Cassia <laughs> <laughs> so we we may see a Cassia okay all right. I like it. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Yeah. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. Old Backpack, did I you just, want to say I anything else? I have one else? more thing to add. One more thing to oh, add. Okay, yeah, go for it. Tower Baron's been in three finals, three straight seasons of Bush League finals, and that ain't no accident. You're, you're, saying. you're coming for the yeah. championship this year. You're going hard. Three straight finals matches, no accident. You're like you're like the Sue of, uh, you know, the Sue uh, StarCraft Two. You're like Sue, um, but in Bush League. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, yeah, I know Sue. Sue is the uh, the European guy who kicks all the Koreans' ass. No, Sue. Sue is the Korean guy that always gets second place in like oh, all of his yeah, tournaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, he you actually know, got a first place. Said to make him the finals, though, that's a lot to be said because a lot of players they'll have one good season and then one bad season. So the consistency is there from uh, Tower Baron. For sure, man, and that's that's undeniable. Um, that's great. But, you know, that, that what we're all looking for is uh, is the, the drafts, the plays that you guys can make to, to of course, beat the, the reigning champs and the, like, the power team of the, of the league. So, definitely, I want to see you guys practice. I want to see you guys bring your A game next week. Get some well, rest. you know, even, even though In Too Deep has got a way higher MMR, average MMR than everyone else, and the best player in the league, it doesn't matter. So, we're going to give it our best shot, and uh, hopefully, we can take them down. All right. I like it. I want. I want to hear the confidence. I love it. Yep. All right, GG, you guys. 
uh, get some rest, or just play more games. I don't, I don't know. Do whatever the fuck you want. You guys won. Yep. Drink a right, beer. Great cast, thank by you. the way. Great cast. Yeah, great cast, exactly. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace out. All right. Later. Later. That is an interview with your winners for today. Big Dick plays BDP with their 3-0 win over Amp. Um, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see this final. Another final. You know, we have kind of the sim, you know, similar players in the final this this uh, season again. You know, that that's a given because these players, all all ten of them, are very good players, and not only that, but are all like ha all like have chemistry and pass with each other. They're all very used to each other's play. Um, so I am definitely looking forward to this kind of it's. I want to call it a rematch. I mean, realistically, it's a rematch. Uh, between Big Dick Plays and Into Deep, so we'll see how it goes down next week. It is it is a best of seven. Um, it is a best of seven, and I I can't predict anything. I can't predict anything right now. I really have no idea. I would be lying if I said I didn't think that Into Deep had the advantage. Very good players. Grizzly making the making his own Big Dick Plays, whooping out his own Big Dick. Um, from uh time to time in these games so really I, I have i have nothing uh nothing to really guess at this point i kind of just want to see it happen already I, I want both of these teams to practice i want both of these teams to bring their a game and we'll see how it goes and uh with that said i think that's pretty much it for today ladies and gentlemen that's that's all we really have unfortunately i was i was looking forward to casting kind of a a full five games but kind of ended short today still GG's from everyone had a had a great time. Um, those are damn. Those are some still very good games. At least in the beginning, they were very close. And and uh, and we'll see next week. Hopefully, it's not a five rounds or you know five round stomper or four four sorry four round stomper. Uh, Casey Court, brother, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. Uh, GG's to everyone. Hey guys, take care. Have a good week. Take care of yourselves. BDP, Into Deep, you guys practice, all right? I want to see those power levels going up, baby. Let's go. All right. Peace out, everyone. Have a good weekend. Catch you later.